Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today let's go over the ideal budget gaming PC template for 2026. So if you want to build a PC rather than settle for an overpriced pre-built but you don't know what to choose as far as the processor, graphics card, motherboard, RAM, SSD, power supply, and PC case, then by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys two separate budget gaming PC templates you can easily follow. One being a less expensive, but more valuable build list if you're looking for the most performance per dollar, and the other being more expensive, but a bit more well-rounded and more future-proof, both of which will be linked in their own PCBuilds.gg links in the description down below. So if you wanted to completely build your PC of choice after watching this video, then I highly suggest you check out my PC build tutorial playlist in my channel. There I'll tell you how to build a PC from start to finish, or you're welcome to check out my various PC build guides on my channel, especially my $800 one from last year, which looks very similar to this. So with all that said, I want to give a quick thank you to Antec for sponsoring this video. So first, let's talk about processor options. And as far as gaming PCs go, this boils down to one very simple difference. It's not so much nowadays an Intel versus AMD sort of thing. In 2026, the main issue is going to be DDR4 versus DDR5. So what I've got in my hands right now is some of the latest processors that would be ideal for a budget gaming PC like this on the AM5 socket from AMD and the LGA 1851 socket from Intel. Both of these use the latest DDR5 RAM, which at the moment costs quite a bit because of increased memory prices due to AI. However, you are also welcome to go with last generation CPUs from these same brands, like going with an AMD AM4 CPU or an Intel LGA 1700 CPU on a DDR4 motherboard. So that right there is the key difference because again, I'm gonna show you guys two separate budget gaming PC templates, one of them being a last generation DDR4 build list, which is gonna be much more affordable and one that is on the current DDR5 platform, but is gonna be more expensive. At the moment, there's gonna be anywhere from a $100 to $200 difference in those DDR4 versus DDR5 RAM prices. And if you wanted to go for the most performance per dollar, it's a no brainer to go with that DDR4 RAM option. That'll save you a lot of money on your budget gaming PC. And between the two brands, if you wanted to go for that cheaper route, I would actually go with Intel. Reason being, there's actually more CPU upgrade options on the LGA 1700 socket, especially if you were to go with a starter Intel Core i5-12600, 12400, or even i3-12100. You can upgrade all the way up to a 14th generation Intel processor, or potentially one of the rumored Barlett Lake CPUs possibly coming out this year. Whereas on AM4, the max CPUs you can get, which are the 5700X3D and 5800X3D, aren't really being made anymore, and they're kind of hard to get your hands on. So for that reason, if you wanted to go the cheaper route, I would go with an LGA 1700 based system with an Intel Core i5 12th gen, 13th gen, or 14th gen. That'll get you the most bang for your buck. But if you want to stick it to a current generation platform using DDR5 RAM and you're fine with paying that premium, then it's a no brainer. You're going to want to go with an AM5 based PC. Right now, Intel's LGA 1851 systems are soon going to be out of phase next year with their new socket, that being 19 something. <laughs> Whereas AMD is still confirmed to have support on the AM5 socket until 2027 and possibly beyond, at least with all upcoming 10th generation Ryzen CPUs, either releasing this year or next year. So again, if you wanna go with a DDR5 based system, stick it to AMD. And again, you'll find that in the PC PCBuilds.gg link in the description for the more expensive budget gaming PC template. Now, as far as the actual CPU goes, shoot for a six core CPU, that's gonna be your best bet. And I would not look at an eight core or above CPU because at that point, you're gonna be allocating too much of your budget to the CPU and not enough to your graphics card. And the graphics card is what's gonna be driving the most amount of frame rate into your games, not the CPU. But to recap my favorite CPU options, if you were to go the cheaper route on LGA 1700, I'm a big fan of the i5-12400F, 12600K, or if you wanted to spend a bit more, the 14600K, if you can find one on a good discount. But if you wanted to build a current AM5 based gaming PC on the AM5 socket, 7500F, 9600X, 7600X are the way to go. 
So those are the CPUs, but now let's briefly talk about motherboards. And to be fair, you can't go wrong, but there's one thing I would recommend. I would definitely stick it to a micro ATX motherboard, no matter what CPU brand or socket you go with. Reason being, going with a smaller micro ATX motherboard not only saves you money and gives you about the same performance, but you're able to go with a cheaper micro ATX PC case like the Antex Flux M. So to briefly touch on this case and prove my point, this case is $75, yet it comes with six included fans. You will not find that sort of value with that many pre-included fans in a full-sized ATX PC case unless you want to spend an additional $30 or $35, which makes a lot of micro ATX PC cases like the Fluxam a really good value proposition if you need to save every dollar there is. So that's why we're going with a micro ATX motherboard just to save money, but again, no harm in doing this. And if you wanted to find what the right chipset is for your certain CPU, here's a quick guide shown on screen showing you what motherboard chipset I'd recommend with a certain CPU on a certain socket, but if you wanted to skip that confusing mumbo jumbo, once again, check out those two PCBuilds.gg links in the description showing you guys the ideal budget gaming PC templates. But now we come to the most difficult part of the video, and that is memory. So right now, memory prices are at an all-time high because of AI and data centers taking up the majority of memory production amongst the three big memory manufacturers. And as a result, on the consumer end, RAM prices are a little ridiculous. So again, to briefly touch up on what I was talking about in the CPU portion of this video, if you want to save money, you're going to want to go with a last generation CPU on a last generation socket using last generation DDR4 memory, because the cost difference between say a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 memory and a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR5 memory is anywhere from $100 to $200. And that keeps going up if you look at 32 or even 64 gigabyte kits of DDR5 memory. So if you wanna look for the ideal DDR4 RAM kit, despite these high memory prices, if you were to go with the cheaper last generation CPU socket option for your gaming PC build, I'd look at finding a RAM kit that has a speed of 3200 megahertz with a cast latency of 16 or 18. Those are gonna be your best bets. They are widely available and they will both work on any AMD or Intel CPU that uses DDR4 memory. But if you are on DDR5, you got a few options and you're mostly gonna be limited by budget. For DDR5, it's essential, I think, that you find a RAM kit that has a speed of 6,000 megahertz. You could find one that's clocked slightly lower at 5,600 megahertz, that's gonna be fine. But as far as cast latency goes, you can really go into the specifics on this, but just to give you a broad range, anything from cast latency 40 to cast latency 30 is going to be fine for a budget gaming PC. Of course, finding a RAM kit with the fastest speed with the lowest cast latency is going to be ideal. But right now in 2026, you can't be picky when it comes to your memory choice because of limited production. But the fun doesn't end there because increased memory prices are also affecting SSD prices. But when it comes to a budget gaming PC, really the number one thing I look for for SSDs is how much storage you actually need. I wouldn't get too specific on the actual type of SSD, whether it's DRAMless or has DRAM, because let's be real, upcoming PC games like Grand Theft Auto 6 and whatever the next Elder Scrolls or next MOBA or big FPS game will be are gonna take up even more storage on our SSDs. One terabyte may be fine now, but it may not be enough in a few years from now. And if you want to go with the cost saving route, going with a DRAMless SSD is not going to be the end of the world if you are a gamer. So then with your storage sorted out, the next thing you got to look at is your choice of power supply. So for most budget gaming PCs like this, the recommended wattage, no matter what CPU or GPU you go with, is always going to land somewhere between 650 watts and 750 watts. That is one way to go if you want to save money. However, if you want to be a little bit future proof, it doesn't hurt to look at a slightly more expensive power supply that offers more wattage and a better efficiency rating like the Antec GSX Gold that I have here. This is a cream of the crop, fully modular 80 plus gold power supply, which is certainly overkill for this system, but will be adequate when it comes time to either upgrading your CPU or your GPU. Reason being, those higher end components are gonna use more wattage and your existing 600 or 750 watt power supply may not be enough for the next RTX 6080 or AMD 10800X3D or something like that. 
So getting a higher wattage power supply right off the bat is a smart choice if you don't want to swap out power supplies with a CPU and GPU upgrade. But again, if you want to save money, 600 to 750 watts is fine on an 80 plus bronze power supply. So with the power supply taken care of, you might want to briefly look at the CPU cooler, and there's definitely a few options you can go with. If you want to go with the cheapest route, you can just use the stock cooler that is included with your CPU if it came with one, bolt that onto the CPU, call it a day, and eight out of 10 times, it's gonna be completely fine. However, an aftermarket air cooler for 30 to $40 is recommended just to keep your CPU cool for long extended durations of time, whether you're gaming or working with it. That is completely fine, but if you wanna go with the aesthetics route, especially if your PC case incentivizes it, like with the Flux M here with its three 120s here on the top, then you might wanna consider a water cooler. So again, that all comes down to budget. If you wanna save the most amount of money, just use the stock cooler. If you wanna go with a little bit more, aftermarket air cooler would be my favorite choice, but if you wanna go all in on aesthetics, then consider a water cooler like this skeleton here. So with the power supply and cooler, that then leads us to the PC case, which for this kind of build, you're gonna to wanna to go with a micro ATX PC case because of the size of our motherboard. That doesn't mean you can't go with an ATX PC case. You can totally do that with a micro ATX motherboard. But like I said earlier, micro ATX PC cases offer more value. Hence why it's in a budget gaming PC template video. And my favorite right now, no joke. I literally mean it because if you look at it, the Antex Flux M is the only PC case on the market for its price offering this many fans right out of the box. You get three ARGB fans, two on the front, one on the rear, and three more supporting fans on the bottom, providing fresh airflow going up all the way into your graphics card and other components. Also, what I like about this case specifically is that it's not necessarily a dual chamber PC case. It's more of a half chamber PC case, but still has the benefits of a dual chamber because the power supply is isolated from the interior of the PC case and it's on its own side here on the back on its side. And I find that way better to work with every day for a gaming PC because I don't know if you've seen some of those dual chamber PC cases are super wide. They have the power supply laying flat or on its side with hard drive bays and it's just way too big. Whereas here in the Flex M, it's much more compact while still giving you that benefit of the dual chamber layout. And still, you could fit in a super long graphics card if you ever wanted to upgrade this GPU to something much bigger. You still got plenty of room while still having a small footprint. Not to mention the Flux M is really easy to work with. It's toolless in a lot of places, and there's plenty of room on the back for cable management, which is gonna be nice for you first time PC builders because this is a half chamber layout. So overall, this genuinely is probably one of the best value proposition PC cases on the market. And I think once you have the core essentials of your entire build down, then you can look at your graphics card and just spend the rest of your budget on focusing on this because really you've got a lot of options to choose from. A lot of people overthink if they go with like a certain graphics card or a certain processor, will they work in tangent together? Will they not work as well as some other brands and models? Disregard all of that. You can mix and match whatever CPU and GPU you want. And really the scenarios you gotta worry about are not gonna be physically possible in a gaming PC with a budget of below $1,000. If you wanna go with an older GPU, like a used one from RTX 3000 or RX 6000, that's totally fine. Or if you wanna go with a newer one, then here are my favorite recommendations. For 1080p gaming, look no further than the ARC B570. This has 10 gigabytes of VRAM, excellent 1080p gaming performance, ray tracing, and can do a bit of content creation and video editing thanks to those built-in hardware decoders and encoders on all Intel Arc graphics cards for only about 200 bucks. But if you wanted to kick things up and do 1440p gaming, but also on a budget, then consider the bigger brother to this, the Arc B580, which has two more gigabytes of VRAM and definitely more processing performance. If you could spend the extra to get a B580, it's definitely worth it. But if you wanted no questions asked, stress-free 1440p gaming, and you are willing to spend a bit more than the B580, the next GPU I recommend and going no further than is the RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte from AMD. That right there is gonna be your best 1440p gaming graphics card without spending to the next tier, which will be anywhere from 500 to $600. It comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, 
a lot of processing performance and definitely more ray tracing performance than even these Intel Arc graphics cards. And I think the main highlight of that GPU is that it has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is gonna be enough for not just now, but many years into the future. And no, I would not consider the RTX 5060 and the 5050 because those two GPUs come with their own downsides. So there you have it. That is the budget gaming PC template for 2026. And if you wanna actually build a PC like this, I've got those full tutorials linked in the description down below, like the $800 build and my full five part how to build a PC series. Once again, thank you to Antec for sending out their PC case, CPU cooler, and power supply. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and this is the Scatterville channel, signing out.